Hit it, Jack. This is Weeknights on Noticias 41. Yeah! Bienvenidos a Telemundo. Yo estoy aquí con la bonitas... Dash. <laughs> ah, we take jokes too far here, in case y'all didn't know. ¿Cómo estás, mi amigo? Right. <laughs> Muy bien, gracias. <laughs> claro. All right. That's it. No more. Let's, let's relax. Also, I'm going to run out of Spanish in about two sentences anyway. So, <laughs> chill out on this Friday. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I'm Dash. This is my co-host, JD. Hi. Oh, just stealing my intro again, huh? You ain't learned your lesson from last week or the week before. I actually just, you know what it is? I just looked at that clip. I just looked at that clip maybe an hour ago. It's Black History Month and you're still trying to steal from another Black person. Mm, right. Mm, mm. You're right. You're right. I got I to gotta get it together. There's Come not on, man. Black that's, left. That's Black on Black crime right there. You're right. You're right. I apologize. Mm, mm, mm. Tell people who you are then. <laughs> I'm, I'm JD, a.k.a. He Who Pods, a.k.a. He Who Got to Deal With Dash and Her Bull. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's who I am. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> of, course it's, of course it's fine when it's your bull. <laughs> right. 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 All right. Let's get to these topics. I'm not messing uh-huh. with you on this Friday. I know it's Friday night. Yep. Yeah. Wrapping week. up another week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and I am tired, so let's get this show on the road. Let's get on the road. Listen, and speaking of tired, uh-huh. Are you let me ask you a question. You know it's a setup, by the way. I know. I can feel it coming. Are you tired of Eric Adams yet? Let me tell you how tired I am of Eric Adams. Tell me. Tell me what you want. He's not my mayor. <laughs> she said, I don't live there. I don't live there, but he's just so frustrating. And and I think what's frustrating, too, is that everybody else is frustrated with him. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to avoid him. You would think that I would live in my little bubble because what he's doing don't really have much to do with me, but... It's so hard to avoid him. Yeah, because uh, Eric Adams is doing all type of foolishness and uh, ignoring all the real problems. But anyway, let's talk about his latest move. Oh, you cut out. What'd you say? I said he likes to grandstand. Talk about it. I mean, with 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 his kind of nightlife, how could you not? Right. He wants to make sure that when he's no longer mayor, everyone remembers that he was. Oh, they're going to remember. Don't worry. Well, but let's tell the people what the hell we're talking about. Uh huh. So, Eric Adams uh, and the city of New York really mm-hmm. are uh, targeting social media, the same as the feds. If you have been paying attention, you know that most of the owners or the top dogs, CEOs of social media websites were recently under fire from the government about their bad behavior and and things they should or should not be held accountable for. And uh, Eric Adams, uh, on behalf of New York City, is suing social media platforms, folks. And he's not he's not holding back. He's suing Meta for Facebook and Instagram's participation. He's suing YouTube and the kid's favorite, Snapchat. Yes, folks, Snapchat. The I think app that adults probably too. stopped using a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah, I only know of two groups of people who are on Snapchat. The kids and a group I'd rather not mention on this platform. I, I know which one you're talking about. So Yes, yep. yes. So, yeah. uh, which is, which is a bizarre, uh, two bizarre categories to have to say together, but yeah, they're opposite ends of the spectrum mm-hmm. quite literally. Um, yeah. So this is the move, uh, 
think we have a number actually. Do you know the number of how much the lawsuit is for? No. Right, let me pull it up. I'm trying to make sure this mic don't make too much noise. Well, while you're looking that up, I'll just say that they're suing because. Oh yes, very important to say that. Thank you so much, co-host. Good. They're suing because of, I guess you could call it community safety. I don't know if it really has a term. I'm sure it does. But it's basically to try to police social media platforms in an effort to protect the mental health of children. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. My question is, though... And I know some things are unavoidable, but my question is, how do we get all the way to a child's mental health with a social media platform? Doesn't that kind of start at home? It does start at home. Yes, it does. So, and I'm not saying, listen, I don't think mental health is that simple. I don't think the conversation is that black and white, but social media, doesn't that get policed by parents or shouldn't that be policed by parents? Maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but I'm a little bit confused as private companies, what are social media platforms supposed to do? And I guess maybe that is what this is questioning. What is their responsibility because they have safeguards safeguards in place right you have to be 13 or 14 or whatever it is to get on tiktok now i know the kids don't go by that no the kids lie and a lot of them lie with their parents permission so they can have access to these apps right so again i ask the question Whose responsibility is it? That is the question. And maybe I don't know what it is kids are doing or finding on social media. I would imagine there's some level of bullying that's happening. I know bullying has left the classroom and gone to the internet. Um, So I'm sure that has something to do with it. Also just like the idea of watching someone else live a life that you want Mm -hmm. or feeling unhappy about your life and seeing other people seemingly flourish in theirs can also create um, bad thoughts, I guess. I don't know. This is a really interesting topic to me because I just feel like it's very complicated. I don't think, I don't know. What do you think? You're well, before I before I get to what I think, yeah, I, I am a dad, uh, and a, a dad who has beef with kids being on social media. But first, let's get to what exactly is happening. So, okay, uh, this is according to CNN. <laughs> What'd you say? I said I got a little ahead of myself. No, <laughs> no, you're supposed to express your opinion. That was great, and you gave me time to scroll, so you did great right there. Uh, CNN says New York City is suing a handful of social media networks alleging their platforms design exploit designs exploit young users mental health and cost the city a hundred million dollars in related health programs and services each year Um, quote a large burden uh, these these issues the lawsuit states impose quote a large burden on cities school districts and public hospital systems that provide mental health services to the youth. Um, And Eric Adams is quoted saying New York is, I guess they forgot the word the, or maybe he didn't say the word the, but the quote is NYC is first major city, first major American city to take combined steps of this magnitude and call out the danger of social media clearly and directly, just as the Surgeon General did with tobacco and guns. Uh, also, before we, res- we keep going, I want to I just say that some of these social media people have responded. Uh, okay. Platforms have responded. Uh, it says here, a snap 
spokesperson told CNN the platform was, quote, intentionally designed to be different from traditional media with a focus on helping users communicate with close friends and by opening up directly to the camera rather than to a feed of content. While we always have work to do, we feel good about the role Snapchat plays in helping close friends feel connected, happy, and prepared as they face the many challenges of adolescence, the spokesperson said. Mm -hmm. uh, Meta, the parent company of Instagram and Facebook, said it offers more than 30 tools and features to support them and their parents. Quote, we've spent a decade working on these issues and hiring people who have dedicated their careers to keeping young people safe and supported online. Similarly, a TikTok post spokesperson said it supports young users with various tools, such as automatic time limits. This is news to me. I didn't know that. And regularly partners with experts to understand emerging best practices. YouTube parent company Google also said it works with mental health and other experts to give age appropriate experiences and potential controls. Quote, the allegations in this complaint are simply not true, said a Google spokesperson. Um, so, hold on one second. Let's let's get a youth. Let's get a youth them real quick. Hey, come here real quick. You could just stand right there. I just want to ask you a question. Did you know TikTok had time limitations in the settings for kids? No, she is shocked. She don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Thank you. That's it. You can go now. Thank you very much. There you go. So that's my 14 year old child. Well, almost 14 uh, for my 14 year old kid who lives on social media and uh, didn't know that there were age limitations on her favorite app. Uh, excuse me, time limitations on her favorite app. I mean, I know that there's a lot of screen time stuff built in these days. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've even seen it. I think Meta even has screen time settings where you, okay. you can set it. I've never tried to use it. I'm pretty good at policing myself, but I know there are some people who say like they need they need that. They need to be able to shut down their screen time at a certain time or, um, you know, between certain hours. Right. So that's not, that's surprising, not surprising to me. I guess, I guess my, question, my question, though, though is, is again, <laughs> like, I know parents who between certain hours, there are no phones and tablets. Okay. Right? Like, they're not, they're not relying on the app to, to dictate to their kids when screen time stops. They're enforcing when screen time stops. Right. Um, so, so again, and maybe I sound like a broken record, but again, I ask, how involved should social media platforms be in this process. I think that they have to create, I think it's their responsibility to create safe environments for people. I don't think that, I don't think that it should be a free for all the way that the internet once was. I don't think it should be like that. I think that you do have to have protocols in place to deal with people who are being harmful or violent or whatever whatever it is negative in some way. I think there should be things in place for that. I think in terms of the type of content you see, like whether it's explicit or violent or vulgar, I think that they have, I think they have a responsibility to control those things within their platforms, at least to a certain degree. But in terms of exposure to any of it, I don't know. I kind of feel like that starts with the person who put the phone or the tablet in your hand. Right. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not looking at it the right way. Maybe I'm not understanding and maybe I need to do a little bit more research on um, the perspective of New York City <laughs> because 
I get it. Like I get community guidelines. I get I get that that needs to exist. I think it needs to exist for adults too. I don't think it's just it's just children. But then I just wonder, like, if I know that as an adult I have to police myself. My expectation is not that that children will police themselves, but I guess my expect expectation is that someone who's in their life or who's close to them or the person who knows they're on social media it also has a hand in this. Yes. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm a little... Uh, this is a little complicated for me because I'm like, I don't really know what... What do they? What do they expect the outcome to be? Here is my question. They being Mayor, Mayor Eric Adams and his administration. Oh, I have no idea about that answer. That's probably the only thing I can't answer out of everything you said. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their expectation is. Um, perhaps it's just for Eric Adams to have another thing to, on his resume uh, to say, "I fought for the kids of New York City." I don't know. Uh, perhaps it's so when he leaves office, he could say, you know, listen, I, I was in there fighting the good fight and trying to change the kids' lives. I don't know. But let me answer some of the things you said. Um, the social media platforms, when you sign up, ask you questions. Most of them, not all of them. They ask you questions about your age. The kids lie. The kids know that they have to lie to move forward. Right. That's not a new thing. Yeah. Uh, when we were kids, there were websites that we went on as adolescents that we did not belong on, and we lied about our age. You're going to lie to get what you want in of those course. circumstances. It's but, like a, a liquor website. Like, all you got to do, do is, is be, able, be, able, be, able be able to do able the to math and figure out right, right. where you would have been 21. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. No, absolutely correct. Um, so all they got to do is lie and they quickly bypass the quote unquote, uh, restriction, right? Once you're on the app and it assumes you're above a certain age, there, there are no restrictions. So you, it is a free for all, yeah. whether that is people half naked or whether it is extremely vulgar verbal content, because mm -hmm. there are times which there was an instance here at home where my kid wasn't doing anything wrong. She was scrolling and her TikTok for you page was, if you just look at it, it looked like nothing was wrong. It was someone painting. You, you actually, it wasn't even the person painting. It was like, you know, the painting being coming to life, so to speak. But a person was cursing and saying things that a kid shouldn't be hearing. Visually, there was nothing wrong, but right. the audio, which was original audio from that content creator, Mm -hmm. was not kid appropriate and that's a problem that is not really being addressed once you're on the platform whatever is there much like everywhere else on the internet mm -hmm. is at your fingertips right now uh as far as the lawsuit stating that this is harming kids mental health yeah that's true mm -hmm. it harm it harms everyone's mental health there's a study that came out not too long ago um I, I can't remember exactly where. I'll try to find it over the weekend and bring it, uh, recite the place on Monday, cite the place on Monday. Um, but a study came out that shows that anyone who is on social media for more than three and a half hours a day, it's causing damage to you mentally. Anyone that is adults, <laughs> children, anyone. Uh -huh. uh, and the reason why is because it is overloading and burning out your dopamine receptors. That's the part of your brain that says, this feels good. I like this. Here's a quick example. When we post something, we get a dopamine rush when we get a like, a comment, etc. Mm -hmm. And so being on social media messes with your dopamine receptors. You're putting them in an overworking mode. They cannot shut down because of the quote unquote doom scroll as it's now called. And so, yes, to what you said, let's get there. You have to be able to police yourself and say, hey, enough is enough. Let me put this down. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to say, well, I came up here for 20 minutes. Let me put this down. When parents allow children to simply doom scroll with any, without any uh, 
provisions in place without any restrictions, without saying, hey, here's your phone after dinner. You can scroll for the next hour and do whatever. And then you have to put it away mm -hmm. or whatever. Without any of those things in place, then you're forcing a child to police their own usage of the phone. Right, yeah. That doesn't matter whether it's text, calls, or social media. Mm -hmm. You have now put the onus on the child. You are now telling the child without words, hey, it's up to you to block the half-naked people. It's up to you to not listen to the X-rated stories. It's up to you to say, hey, it's time to put this away. And that, my friends, is the first problem. The Never. first problem is kids are kids. Most children's brains, everybody's brain, who's not a certain age, your brain is still developing. You don't really understand all of the things in life. And even as adults, there's plenty of things that we're learning on a daily basis. Unless you taught your kid how to police themselves on social media, they will not know how. It's also not a child's responsibility to police themselves in any way. That is what parents are supposed to do. I have said this once, I've said this twice, I've said this many times, and I will say it again. The real problem is a lot of people will say, well, then tell parents to tell the kids to get off of social media. Sure, that sounds easy, except there's a problem. How do you tell your kid to stop being addicted to the thing you're addicted to? That's a fair question. How do you turn to your kid and say, hey, get off of TikTok while you're scrolling on TikTok? Mm -hmm. You see, then you would have to be able to be cognizant enough to mm -hmm. know I have a problem. Right. And I have to work on fixing this problem. Mm -hmm. I have to get rid of this social media addiction, this dopamine addiction that I have given myself. And really, we haven't given ourselves. That is where the companies are guilty. They have created devices. They have created this platform, this software that is highly addictive and intentionally given it to us. It's not an experiment. It's purposefully done. And so, yes, on that, that's on them. And the government has said they're trying to restrict it for various reasons. Another topic for another time. But it's hard to just stop something that you're addicted to. And not only are you addicted to it, but so is your child. So how do I say to my kid, hey, you can't have any more ice cream while I'm eating ice cream. Right. That's a challenge. That's why you got to hide that the, ice is, the back of the freezer. <laughs> that's why you got to not have ice cream. That's why you got to well, be cognizant and realize. I'm if it's in the house, you got to put it at the back of the freezer. Right. And I'm, so, I'm kidding, but. I know. I know. Um, so there's a lot of things that could happen. There's a lot of things that should happen. Screen time limitations are a good thing. I'm old. I believe kids don't need phones. I know in today's world of 2024, that makes me sound like a, a, a great, great grandpa. And that's fine. But the reality is kids don't need phones. The quote unquote emergencies everyone fakes about, they really aren't real. You could get your kids plenty of other devices for those emergencies. And here's what's crazy. There are phones that exist just for emergencies where it programs only three to five numbers mm -hmm. and they are only called for emergencies. You can very easily get your kid that phone. They don't need the iPhone 15 and the, you know, Galaxy Ultra 2023. They don't need those devices. We give them to them at four years old, five years old, two years old, and we create monsters. The problem is we're addicted to these devices we are letting these devices babysit our children, hence creating multiple problems and destroying the first layer of defense, which is you, the parent. No, I hear that. I hear that. I think it's such a weird time. It's, it's such a, not a weird time, but it's such a different time now than what it once was, you know, kids playing outside and stuff what what's outside it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like so, so strange. strange 
kids don't have like neighborhood friends anymore. Remember, you used to be able to just go outside and like play with the neighborhood kids because everybody would be outside. Like yeah. that world doesn't exist anymore, and I don't want I don't want to sound like grandma, but but I do think that's kind of a factor here. Um, <laughs> It's like I'm of two minds because I think that this is the world that they're growing up in. So they're living in a very connected world. And so I kind of feel like to completely disconnect them is not beneficial. Um, it's kind of like, well, for, at least for me, thinking about like when I was a kid, yeah, there was playing outside or like for us, it was, uh, we'd go to my grandmother's house and we had a bunch of cousins and we'd play with them and go outside with them and go to the park and whatever. But there was also that element of like when your friend, when you're not in school and you want to talk to your friends, you call them on the phone. It was a landline, but you called them on the phone they now have these devices that are portable and they can be out wherever and connect with their friends. They can FaceTime, they can Snapchat, they can send a text message, they can call if they want to call. They'll probably FaceTime, but they, you know. So I don't, it's like, I feel like I'm a broken record when I say balance in all things, but I think that there has to be some sort of happy medium between not being connected at all. And I'm not talking about four-year-olds, just so we're clear. Because I know you mentioned, like, there's small, small kids that have phones and whatnot. Not really. Oh, yeah. I mean, today, them. babies have tablets with no educational platforms on those tablets. Just YouTube. Not... And go ahead, fam. But yeah, no, I understand. But I guess I'm talking a little about a kid who's a little bit older, probably school age, and and older. Um, so it's like you don't want to completely disconnect them, but you also have to find some sort of balance. Sure. Between them living in a existing in a connected world and a sense of reality. Listen, I was with my nieces the other day. And I was like, phone's on the table. We're going to watch a movie. Right. Because cause it drives me crazy to see them on the phones all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, you have not popped your head up for even five minutes in over an hour. And to me, that drives me crazy because I'm someone who can totally forget my phone at home and be fine for the rest of the day. Right. There are people who will move mountains to get back home to get their phone because they can't imagine life without. That's not me. So, so I I don't know. I guess, like you said, there the the apps do have a social responsibility, um, and a responsibility to, as I was saying before, and a responsibility to keep people safe. Um, in their communities that they they create or they, they that they facilitate, I should say, because they create the environment for these communities to happen. Um, but yeah, you still got to find, I mean, you know, it takes a village. So it can't just be that Snapchat is solely responsible for little Johnny and his, you know, his obsession with Snapchat and, you know, the kids who beat each other up on and post it online. I'm making right. stuff up. No, clearly. But it has to be, like you said, they can't police themselves. Um, there has to be, there has to be some sort of commitment on both sides. Yeah, because you're not even sitting there and watching the watching the feed. Right. It would be different if your kid was sitting right with you and y'all were scrolling together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a dope recipe. You want to try to make that? Oh, man, where that outfit? Man, that, that get ready with me was pretty fly. You, you want an outfit like that? Let's go shopping tomorrow and get you that outfit. Right. That would be different. But you're not. Right. You're in one corner on your device 
they're on the complete opposite corner on their device, or you're in your room with your device. They're in their room with their with your with everybody's in their opposite places on their theirs, yeah. neutral corners on their devices, and you have no idea. I don't know what my kid watches on TikTok and Instagram, and I hate Snapchat. I don't think Snapchat should even exist, especially for kids. Why, why do they have a device where something can disappear in 24 hours? So if I go get your phone right now, I don't have any idea because everything is gone from 24 hours ago, unless it was a text you saved or a picture you saved. Yeah. Nah. That can nah. be dangerous. I mean, it could all be dangerous in various ways, but that's what I'm saying. Cause they're not, my point is we're not even doing that. Right. And I say we, because I mean, all of us, and I'm guilty of it too. And my kid scrolls on social media. And at this point, I'm not sitting next to her and, and mm -hmm. scrolling with her. She wouldn't want me to do that today. Right. She's been on all those social media platforms for years. She feels, she feels it would be intrusive. If I call her back out, she's going to say, no, dad, that's violating my privacy, but that's a wrong, that's wrong too, because you're a kid, you don't have privacy. Yeah. And that's not her fault or any kid's fault. That's the parents' fault. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. If a car is coming, you would protect your kid from the car. If a if a burglar right. breaks in the house, you'll protect your kid from the burglar. But the reason you don't see social media as one of those things, and the reason someone will hear this and say, man, he's being very extreme, is because you don't see it as a threat. And because, once again, you're addicted to it. So you're welcoming the burglar. Hey, what's up? What you want, the TV this time? Go ahead. We don't even really watch TV anymore. Take it. It's 4K. Go ahead. It's all... It's all... We're all we're curious. All Maybe some of us more than others. But we're all curious. So think about being a kid. I just think about being a kid and like... I was the curious kid. I wanted to, you know, you hear something, you're like, ooh, what are they saying? Or you see something and you're like, ooh, what's that? Your, your, your instinct is to want to know what this is or what's going on. And so it could be extremely difficult to say, ah, I don't think I should be looking at this or, you know, whatever it is. Most kids are probably not going to do that, so. I think I think it's obvious what needs to happen here. I don't know how a lawsuit against these platforms will go. I, it'll probably see some hearings or something like that. I feel like I feel like the courts typically indulge um, in these battles with the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So. I wouldn't be surprised if this went somewhere, just at least for a little while. Right. Um, and they make them plead their cases. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. As far as the lawsuit goes, I don't. I have. I have no idea where this would even go. No, I don't think it's going to get very far. So. Yeah, because as the conglomerate, all I got to do is present the tools that I've created. Mm -hmm. Like that TikTok feature, I didn't even know existed for example, right. that my kid didn't know existed. So right. you could just, you could, that's the argument right there. Hey, we know it's three and a half hours and more is damaging. That's why we put this, this limitation here. Or now we're okay. So you guys are saying that it's not visible because parents are saying they didn't know about it. Now we're going to put a pop up. And if you're between this age and that age, when you get on or periodically or whatever it is, there's going to be a pop up that offers this setting right. or whatever the yes so they will make whatever modifications that are probably really easy for their engineers to yeah. go and fix of and, course you know make the problem go away but yeah. yeah i didn't expect us to talk that long about this topic <laughs> oh i knew it would be a deep dive yeah, yeah i knew it'd be a deep dive all right what you want to do you want to wrap it up and have a one topic episode or you want to hit something else real quick we can hit something quick. All right. Let's talk about Pinterest. Tell me about Pinterest. What's going on over there? Are we going to Pinterest? Ooh. Yeah, why not? So Pinterest <laughs> is is getting into the streaming game. Yes, they are. The first ever streaming TV show. The first ever, their, their first ever streaming TV show. So they're collaborating with Tastemade, which Tastemade has its own channel on, um, 
the streaming devices, platforms. Platforms. So right. if you have, a, so if you have an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku or something like that, you can access the Taste Made app. Mm. Um, and they're teaming up with an, a food influencer. I cannot remember her name right now, but uh, she's going to be doing a 10 episode series. And again, it's going to be in conjunction with Pinterest and Tastemade. So where, whatever you use, whatever you use to stream, you can download the Tastemade app and it will be something that you can watch there. And apparently Pinterest has a long term plan to get more involved in things that go beyond the Pinterest app. So okay. I think this is really cool, really interesting. And I also think this speaks to a different side of social media, but I think this also speaks to the fact that um, people in this day and age are looking for innovative ways to generate revenue and looking for ways to um, create unique ideas because uh, we're living in a time where you know I feel like we're in one of those transitional periods right now where like streaming has been around for a while mm -hmm. but now we're seeing the app change a little bit a lot of them are merging and you know figuring out how to do things as these more consolidated units um, we're seeing that streaming is now getting live, live television. Um, so the, the landscape is changing a bit. Um, we're learning that we're not going to be able to share passwords on most of the apps we like at this point. Right. It's going <laughs> to, that's going to be very short lived at this point. So I think that we're in, we're in one of those periods where we're, we're transitioning and we're, and, and the media industry is trying to figure out what's next. Um, and how do you take certain things that kind of have been around for a while now and take them to the next level? So that's what this sounds like with Pinterest. I mean, Pinterest is an app that you go to and you, you know, you create your boards and you can watch videos and find recipes or outfits or whatever you're interested in. I'm sure it's there on Pinterest. You want to look up travel or whatever the case may be. So I think this is pretty cool to kind of take it off the screen off the page if you will right um off the app and onto the big screen and onto the big screen so um and i think and we'll I think see a lot, lot more of this happening with um with different uh companies like this so yeah uh her name is danny rose i was look i looked it up and while you were talking and yeah. she is a black mom entrepreneur and she's uh who the show will be with i love that yeah. yeah, I think it's really cool. I think it's really smart. I think mm -hmm. it's a good way for Pinterest to enter the game. Uh, and I'm curious to see what else Pinterest will do. I'm curious to see how successful this show will be uh, and what type of shows it may, may springboard off of this. Yeah. Uh, because perhaps other conglomerates will see this and say, okay, time to do something similar. Or perhaps Pinterest will say, now we, like you said, a long-term plan where this about to be our jam for a minute. For a while, we about to, we about to do this right here, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, streaming has taken a lot of different twists and turns, and today is extremely popular. Uh, I saw a clip of Kai Sinat saying that he streams for eight hours a day most of the time. Uh, that's a lot of time. Yeah, he was on. Um, well, it doesn't matter where he was on, but uh, he was he was asked uh, how long he streams on average. He says, "I try to do at least seven to eight hours a day." That's a lot. So that's that's a different ball game right there. And to take that, monetize that, and use it to your company's advantage for leverage is really smart and a really smart way for them to enter um, a new arm of the industry because they're in the entertainment and media industry already. But this is a whole different lane for Pinterest. So it's really smart. Um, slightly different. Amazon has something going on with Mr. Beast. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what this made me think about. It is different. It's not a streaming show. It's like a challenge type of show because that's one of the things he's popular for mm -hmm. on YouTube. Uh, and so they'll be doing challenges on a big scale and people will win prizes. But another famous person from 
you know, YouTube and from that type of realm is getting TV money now. And I think that's really cool. Um, so, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm always in favor of creators getting big checks, big looks and doing big things. So uh, I think it's pretty fly for her, for Danny Rose and for Mr. Beast, even yeah. though they're different. But, you know, they both come from these apps. You know what I mean? I got to be honest. Yes. I didn't know who Mr. Beast was until I started following Keith Lee. Ah, okay. And I know, I know that Mr. Beast is... He's like the number one YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know who that was. Yeah, I think he has like 21 million subscribers or more. Yeah. I think that number might be too low, actually. I had no idea who this person was. And I think Keith Lee was trying to get him was trying to get him to collaborate with him at one point like this was like over a year ago mm -hmm. and i was like who is that and honestly even then i didn't look the person up oh yeah he's huge i i actually learned of mr beast through the news because yeah. he opened a burger joint in a jersey mall and his fans came and completely shut down the jersey mall <laughs> to get these okay. burgers and i was like what the headline was like YouTuber, YouTuber and his fans shut down more. And I was like, Ooh, that's wild. How did that happen? I thought it was a riot. I'm thinking like, Oh man, the purge. Wow. No burgers. It's his like fans wanted his that, burgers. Just, oh my gosh. It's like when Tyson like that went to Union Square. Yeah. But way worse because we're talking about an entire mall filled Ooh. with his fans from all over the world. People were flying in to come get this burger. Not even cause it was a great burger just cause it was his burger joint. Oh, it was, was like the ask, opening. Because you know I'm a foodie. I'm like, ooh, what kind of burger? Oh, I have no idea. But he's got all types of brand <laughs> deals. I was in Wawa's one day, and there was like the Mr. B so-and-so at the counter. I was like, my man got snacks. This is crazy. Yeah, so I've seen, okay, so since then, I have been in like. Yeah, you tapped in now. Now, it's, right, now you can't so unsee now it. Now I know, because they did end up doing a collaboration. So I think at one point, Keith Lee reviewed some of Mr. B's food items. But, oh, okay. Yep. But I've been in Walgreens and I've seen Mr. B's chocolate bars, and I said, yep. "Oh, mm -hmm. okay. This, this person is very popular." And yeah, he's crazy. he's like the he's like I'm not exaggerating <laughs> when I say he's the no, number one YouTuber. Like, I know I just wasn't I wasn't always hip, so I didn't I, got I, you. I didn't want to sit up here and lie and act like Mr. Beast was like really on my radar like that. Because he wasn't, but I right. do, I do know, I am aware of him now, and I know, I, I know what um, his impact is. But I just thought that was really interesting, and I yeah. think, it's, I think it's cool what, I think it's cool that we were like teenagers and young adults, and who knew that anybody was going to be able to make money off of like their personalities and. The, the, this is this is the weird thing, right? Because we started a conversation about you know some of the bad things about social media and about uh, you know people on the internet, but then there's also this other side to it that's actually pretty cool and pretty interesting. That's why, that's why I said we should cover that one instead of some of our other topics we have. Yeah, and, balance. You know, it's created created lanes for people that we didn't know would ever exist. Yeah. So I think it's pretty cool, but it is yeah. very cool. Shout out to Pinterest and Danny Rose. Black History happening on Black History Month. We love it. We love it. Yep. Well, that's it for us. Y'all have a good weekend. Thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing. We appreciate you. And we'll be back on Monday. Monday. Bye.